I am convinced augmented virtual and mixed reality headsets or glasses are the next frontier of computing and entertainment. There's simply no form factor existing phones, tablets, or computers could take to deliver the bold new experiences these headsets will offer. This week, Apple previewed the latest major OS updates at their WWDC event, expected to be made available in the fall. By and large, I would categorize these new features as awesome quality of life improvements clearly built for a post-pandemic world. And while there are no blockbuster new features coming, sometimes it's all about the subtext and the possibilities. So in this video, I'll walk you through why recent announcements have me convinced Apple is building their virtual and or augmented reality glasses right under our noses. One tech mind. For years, Apple has built up the augmented reality capabilities of its hardware and software and has consistently showcased developer AR demos at their events. Tim Cook has also commented multiple times in interviews about the future of AR. If you have ever digitally placed a chair or desk from Amazon into your room or played Pokemon Go, you've had exposure to augmented reality. And if you've ever wailed your arms around hitting blocks to music and Beat Saber, that's virtual reality. A few versions ago, Apple even built in external graphics card support for Mac OS and encouraged developers that this was great for VR and AR development. But Apple is not investing heavily in these areas for experiences that will forever be locked in a box. And it's no secret Apple's trialing some kind of glasses technology based on rumors and patents. With all that aside, here are the existing technologies and features I think Apple will eventually adopt for this format. Keep in mind, this is pure speculation and some estimated guessing on my part. And for the sake of explanation, I will refer to this unconfirmed Apple product as Apple Frames and reference these amazing renders by Marcus Kane that he did based on recent VR headset rumors. Apple uses OLED and now mini LED technology in their displays, which have upwards of 326 pixels per inch. This retina display standard was set when iPhone 4 launched in 2010, since most people can't tell the difference beyond that when the device is held 10 to 12 inches away from their eyes. Apple frames will likely need a much higher pixel density and resolution. For reference, my Oculus Quest 2 back there has a single near 4K resolution split between each eye, and it was a noticeable upgrade from the first generation product, but it's not 100% immersive. You can still make out individual pixels and clearly see there's room for improvement. At times, it can even be distracting, especially in menus and while reading text. And it's still not that great for video, even when you compare it to something like an iPhone. Apple's Super, Pro, and Liquid Retina XDR displays already offer staggering amounts of contrast, brightness, and a vibrant full range of colors. I'm simplifying here, but if they can adapt this technology for Apple frames and substantially increase the pixels per inch, this is the pathway for true immersion. And this mostly applies to VR, which should be as immersive as possible. We may see different display solutions for AR like projection, since those experiences are grounded in the real world. Apple frames will leverage computational audio found in HomePod and AirPods to deliver excellent quality sound essential to any immersive experience. Spatial Audio launched on AirPods last year for video and has already rapidly expanded to most of Apple's computers. This week saw the surprise launch of Spatial Audio for Apple Music and you guys, it's absolutely phenomenal. As I listen to Rush's Limelight, I feel transported into one of their shows, something I'll sadly never get to experience again in real life but perhaps in VR. With spatial audio and 3D modeling, Apple Frames could allow you to attend a concert from before you were even born. This is one of the most exciting ideas I can think of when I close my eyes at night and dream about VR. But let me know what your VR dreams are down in the comments below. Apple Frames are going to require powerful and efficient components, something Apple Silicon is already engineered for. Apple will likely leverage the best parts of all their chips in a new custom package of some sort. Take the exceptional performance, unified memory, and battery friendliness of the M1, which can already drive huge displays. The proximity awareness of the U1 to be used with room sensors or even air tags to set boundaries or be used in games. And the computational audio of the H1 chip, which we already touched on, and you've got one absolute beast of a chip for Apple frames. Apple is outfitting all their products with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5, the latest radio standards, which provide higher speeds than ever before. Oh yeah, and 5G. 5G, 5G ultra wideband. Something Apple frames could benefit from, especially if it's able to leverage the processing power of your other Apple devices, now that they all share the same silicon and a lot of the same code and apps. That's to say, I do expect Apple frames to be completely wireless without any ability to hardwire an external computer 
in order to run additional apps or games. Apple equips their devices with amazing camera systems, which could be used to take pictures in AR and help overlay our world with information. I can also see them adapting their True Depth system, currently used for Face ID, to maybe scan your iris when you put on Apple Frames in order to automatically authenticate you. You think they would call it iID? iPhone 12 Pro, Pro Max, and iPad Pro also have a LiDAR sensor used to detect distance, which developers are already using to improve their existing AR apps. LiDAR can also be used to scan real life environments and items to bring them into a 3D space. Something Apple is making even easier to perform in iOS 15, but I'm sure it's all coincidence. Apple Frames will enable truly new experiences. For instance, extending the new SharePlay features announced at WWDC and enabling you to watch and listen to content with your friends and family in mixed reality while using FaceTime. This is awesome because I would just love to have the latest Marvel show hovering off of my vision while I'm doing the dishes or other chores. And they could leverage the new machine learning processing to block out background noise when you're on a call. Maybe we'll even see a mixed reality version of FaceTime itself where you could walk around and converse in the same virtual space with Mimoji bodies, of course. They also showed off literal AR navigation at WWDC, which will so obviously come to Apple frames and be glorious. I expect there to be a heavy emphasis on games. Pokemon Go will make the leap among others, at which point I will be able to live out eight-year-old Lance's dream of hitting the road in my quest to become a Pokemon master. So long, family. Apple has never truly excelled in the gaming space, so this will be one of the biggest hurdles they need to overcome since gaming is one of the broadest use cases for this medium. Also, imagine working out with your Apple Watch and Fitness Plus while wearing Apple frames or getting work done in a 3D office with multiple virtual screens. I would also expect the frames to display notifications from your iPhone, but only while you're wearing them, of course. For all other times, Apple Watch will continue to be the wearable of choice for managing those. And there are bound to be industrial applications in the areas of manufacturing, design, healthcare, and more, since Apple typically makes devices with universal purpose as opposed to specialized ones. And because privacy is one of the pillars of Apple technology, you could bet the frames will follow suit with features like app store review process, app tracking transparency, privacy labels for apps, and new in iOS 15, privacy reports, which detail how installed apps use your sensors and network activity. I would also expect frames to have unique privacy controls, perhaps external visual or audio cues when microphones and cameras are being used. By drastic comparison, Oculus Quest 2 now mandates connection to your Facebook account, whom we all know is just the bastion of digital privacy. Look, nothing is truly known when it comes to Apple frames, but my biggest questions revolve around form factor, design, battery life, tracking methods, cellular connectivity, and how we will interact with the interface and how hefty the price tag is gonna be because you know that thing's not gonna be cheap. And knowing Apple, I have a strong suspicion they may be tempted to completely eliminate any semblance of a traditional controller or remote and rely solely on hand, eye, and body tracking. I was absolutely giddy about putting this video together, which shows why I'm so excited for the possibilities VR and AR will offer. So let me know down in the comments below if you are as excited for Apple frames as I am and what your thoughts are on this rumored product. So if you like this one, please consider giving it the old thumbs up, subscribing to help build the most obsessed community in tech and hitting that bell so you don't miss anything else. And until next time, thanks for listening to my One Tech Mind.